Sunshine, uh, joining with uh, the latter part of the show, and today uh, on the show we'll be showcasing another concept that's been initiated by the University of Kalania. And uh, since they have been named as a Green University in 2014, they, uh, we have two officials, two lecturers from the campus, Dr. Vasanti Subasing and also Dr. Rangika uh, Bandar, joining with us today uh, to talk about their initiation, how they are putting this uh, concept into practice when it comes to going green. Uh, in the country globally and also right now as a university in the country. So good morning to both of you. Good morning. So I'll turn to Dr. Vasanti first. Now, this uh, you, your campus, uh, University of Kalani, has been declared as a, a green university. So what does it really mean by going green as a campus or as an institute? Yeah, actually it's a very good question because when we say going green, a lot of people have a misconception that going green means having a lot of trees, having a lot of green coverage, mm -hmm. but it's actually much more than that, right? So when you say going green, what we mean is you have to uh, like uh, conduct operations of the university in a way that it will have a zero or like a no impact or, or no negative impact on the environment. Mm -hmm. So basically what we have done is we have actually adopted a green policy mm -hmm. and then there are like scientific methods and new tools that you can use to measure the impact of the university activities on the environment. So we work on according to a plan mm -hmm. to make sure that our university will use the natural resources in a sustainable manner. Right. And also uh, we conduct all our operations to have a negative or no impact, I mean no positive or no impact on the environment. Okay. All right, so uh, Dr. Rangika, now coming to you. Uh, yeah. Now, when you say this green concept, what kind of an impl implementation plan that you uh, have got in place and how would you sort of practice it in yes. the university? Uh, yes, um, if I talk about that, uh, after we initiated the concept on uh, 2014, mm -hmm. so first of all, we set an environmental policy. Mm -hmm. In scientifically, when we manage the environment, of course, as an institution mm -hmm. or as a country, maybe we have to have an environmental policy. So we adopted that, we formulated right. it and adopted that in 2014. Mm -hmm. And uh, thereafter, whatever the practices we conduct in the university, we are trying our best to do it, act accordingly. So basically, we have, uh, we are conducting the practice under four themes, that is uh, maintaining biological diversity to make sure that uh, butterflies and mm -hmm. some other animals, we are trying to enrich their habitats, mm -hmm. to see animals in their mm -hmm. birds. Uh, that is the first thing. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is uh, managing our solid waste. Mm -hmm. So I know in the institution, it has become a serious problem nowadays. Mm -hmm. We generate a lot of papers, paper waste at the moment. Mm -hmm. And there are some other waste, food waste coming from canteens and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, we are actually, um, per day we have about 8,000 students and ac uh, academic staff, non-academic staff, and even during the weekends, uh, external degree programs. A lot of people coming in, so we generate a lot of solid waste. Mm -hmm. So managing solid waste has become a problem. So we thought of uh, addressing the issue. Mm -hmm. So under this concept, we are uh, nicely, I mean, we are in a position to manage the mm -hmm. solid waste. So we convert solid waste basically into compost. Mm -hmm. So we sell them mm -hmm. and we are earning money. Okay. So we that money is using again to uh, to some other practices mm -hmm. of the concept, and uh, that is one of the things that we do. Mm -hmm. And thereafter, uh, we are managing water. Mm -hmm. So nowadays, uh, when I talk technically in environmental management, so water management can be done in many ways. Mm -hmm. So we can conserve water, we can reuse water, we can recycle water, we can reduce the consumption. Yes. So we do conduct awareness programs mm -hmm. uh, for stu with students mm -hmm. and even with the uh, academic staff and the other stakeholders in the university to um, how we can manage water, how we can reduce our consumption. We check for water leaks, mm -hmm. basically institutions like that, you know. So we can see some leaks, maybe even a drop per day we calculate and per uh, week we calculate and mm -hmm. we can magnify the issue and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. So we m make every measures to minimize the water uh, uh, loss mm -hmm. and uh, we do harvest rainwater and uh, harvesting rainwater we m use them in gardening mm -hmm. and we use those uh, harvested rainwater in uh, washing purposes. Mm -hmm. Likewise uh, we have uh, taken some measures to conserve uh, and um, manage water mm -hmm. and thereafter about energy 
So you know that we are, per month we pay a lot for energy. Actually, uh, it is very unavoidable institutions like ours, and uh, <coughs> there is a uh, we pay for the wastage. Actually, mm -hmm. there are some places where the wastage can be seen. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we have conducted the energy audit, mm -hmm. and we saw the points where we can take measures to minimize that loss. Mm -hmm. So we have completed the audit. And there are some measures to be taken for uh, for many years. We have to go with the plan, mm -hmm. like short term um, implementations and the medium and the long term. Mm -hmm. So uh, one by one, we are taking measures to go with the audit, mm -hmm. and we will see the results in the near future. Actually, we are already experiencing. Mm -hmm. For example, we are replacing the normal regular bulbs with uh, LEDs. Mm -hmm. a very simple example, if I come up with and about the air conditions that we use, mm -hmm. we actually we have come up with a, a circular, mm -hmm. I mean kind of a regulation in the university with the help of the vice chancellor saying that uh, we have to on the ACs after 9.30. Mm -hmm. So we believe that in the morning like we are fine, like it That's is okay, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have to switch it off at uh, 3 or 3.30. Mm -hmm. So that has become regulation. Mm -hmm. So we were the ones who, I mean the Center for Sustainability Solutions, we were the ones who uh, initiated the idea mm -hmm. and uh, if you want to purchase an AC for a room so first of all we have to fill out a form before purchasing anyway we have to go through the supplies there's a different administration procedure right. mm -hmm. so when we um, want one uh, we have to apply there's an application and uh, they will come and check for our uh, rooms to see whether there are any leak, uh, leaks Mm -hmm. uh, whether the room is uh, okay to have an AC, what is the capacity, which size AC is to be installed. Mm -hmm. so these kind of things are checking at the moment mm -hmm. because of this concept. Okay. Otherwise, we just used to ask for an AC yeah. and AC, different it kind of okay. ACs, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. It went like that. Right. Now, with this, uh, we have taken a lot of measures mm -hmm. to uh, conserve energy. So uh, actually at this moment I would like to say that people, uh, as she mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, people are asking if you have been declared as a green university, mm -hmm. so where are the greenies, mm -hmm. that it, they are the greenies, like you know, we have taken a lot of measures, mm -hmm. the benefits would be for the future, future generations. Not, not the current, the yeah. current uh, day as per se. So Dr. Now, because you were talking about this implementation plan, I also thought to um, ask you, now when you say this green concept or doing such changes in the university, it also requires a lot of uh, collective uh, measures and uh, you know it has to be a group work, a team work. Mm -hmm. So what is the support you know, in terms of the students and in terms of the, um, you know, the other people who's working in the university? What is the support like and how easy or how hard is it to uh, you know, maintain all this together? But in that aspect, actually, I think we have been quite lucky because uh, we have been getting a very good support from our current vice chancellor mm -hmm. as well as our deputy vice chancellor in terms of like uh, implementation policies as well as the financials. All aspects we have been getting support from uh, our current vice chancellor, Professor Seema Singh, as well as our deputy vice, vice chancellor, uh, Dr. Professor Lakshman. Uh, Sinvaratna and uh, also uh, when we talk about uh, like uh, the stakeholder support initially there was little bit of resistance because I think people anyway like uh, uh, re you know when there is a change mm. there is all this resistance for the change yeah. and if you look at university it is actually different from uh, like another organizations because we have like uh, various groups of stakeholders we have mm. students who are like our permanent students, then we have academic staff, we have non-academic staff and then we have the uh, uh, administrative. administrative staff and then also we have a student population who are external students, they will mm. be coming only on the weekend, so depending on when their courses are. And the other problem is our student population is con continuously changing. Mm. So the biggest challenge we came across is like uh, we initiated this program, we raised awareness and we got people to get involved. But then as we go on, we always get a new population mm -hmm. that is not aware mm -hmm. about how the green concept or what are the practices of the university. So we have to continuously raise awareness. Mm -hmm. But I think we have been successful in overcoming these challenges because if I say so, now uh, our university is the number one green university in Sri Lanka. Also, we rank 259 in green metric rankings, which is uh, like a 
program conducted under United Nations Environment uh, Program, uh, which uh, involves about 700 odd universities coming mm. from 75 different countries. Oh. Um, That's really yeah. exemplary, yeah. Think, you know, because what you're doing, I mean, it's it's not something that you show to the country, but also you're you're sustaining yourself and also you're teaching your own students about the, how to save the nature, then uh, the how to you know contribute to the, the environment at the same time. So that's really exemplary, and we really appreciate it. And uh, also, would you uh, could you explain the process now? Even though you you gave up, came up with uh, different different uh, small examples, you said yeah. about the changing of light bulbs and also about processes. Yeah. So this whole procedure must have been must be com quite complex. So you came up with this idea, or like this concept uh, was initiated by both of you. So could you tell us what's, what inspired you to get into this? Yeah, I would like to make a clarification on that. Actually, this was initiated, uh, this was a concept uh, came out from Professor UPK Appa. Mm -hmm. uh, he's also working with us in the Department of Zoology and Environmental Management at the Faculty of Science and he was talking with the vice, former vice chancellor at, the, at that time and he initiated the concept mm -hmm. and we formulated a committee mm -hmm. and i was one of the first member. yeah member mm -hmm. there and she is also working for that mm -hmm. we have members representing from various faculties from the faculty of medicine she's uh, representing uh, faculty of social sciences mm -hmm. faculty of humanities mm -hmm. um, faculty of management likewise so we have uh, a f uh, quite a few members yeah. those who are voluntarily working on this accept, uh, concept mm -hmm. and um, so that is how we initiated the process mm -hmm. and um, uh, so we got together we mm -hmm. formulated the policy mm -hmm. and we are working under different themes and of course we have student volunteers mm -hmm. who are known as uh, Kel Green volunteers mm -hmm. and we have volunteers from the non-academic staff Green Task Force, they are actively participating when we organize such things, awareness mm -hmm. programs or whatever the uh, strategies that we implemented to, uh, for being green. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is how it goes and of course the Vice Chancellor mm -hmm. uh, and the academic staff, uh, they are supporting us really well. Okay. Can you also connect <coughs> the, uh, the campaign, the awareness campaign that you'll be having, the I Go Green 2018? How, how does that work when it comes to supporting the country and the nature at the same time? Yes, the I Go Green concept, uh, actually we first, uh, we had one already in 2016. So our idea is to um, the give out the knowledge that we were talking about, mm -hmm. uh, give out the uh, concept mm -hmm. to the you know, uh, school children. Mm -hmm. Actually, we are dealing with the university students and we want to give the concept out for the school children. Mm -hmm. So first of all, we thought, um, our ki our children, uh, I mean the, our our staff, academic or whatever the staff members, to, uh, kids would be invited mm -hmm. for the uh, program. Mm -hmm. So in that, uh, <coughs> we at this time in 2018 we are having it for the second time on uh, December 19th. Mm -hmm. So um, in that uh, uh, we are expecting around 300 students. Mm -hmm. Actually, we can see a very uh, uh, enthusiastic responses from the staff, uh, mm -hmm. they are willing to participate their students into the program mm -hmm. than in 2016. Right. So w we are taking students from grade one to grade 13. It's a diverse group mm -hmm. coming from different schools representing. So we are going to group them into few groups based on their age group and we customize the program mm -hmm. to fit into their mindset. Mm -hmm. So even in that we are trying to give out the concept mm -hmm by actively participating in various activities that we are planning to have on that day. So even there we are trying to show them that how the solar energy as mm -hmm. a renewable energy can be used in their day to day lives. So we are planning to have some solar cooking sessions. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's going to solar be an interesting sessions. one, yes. <laughs> 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 and uh, they are going to make use of waste uh -huh. to and convert them to resource. Mm. And we have some demonstrators demonstrating and they are actively engaging in that, them hopefully. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a quiz competition mm -hmm. and an art competition for small age groups on uh, themes on environment. And they will be engaging in that. And uh, um, so we are going to see the winners and they would be awarded. And the students, those who are participating, will get the knowledge and their active participation. And they are going to get some certificates and gifts. Uh, mm. gift packs uh, so um, they would be happy mm. and they would see at the end of the day by doing all these things what we are trying to do, do is 
they are going to be part of the environment. Mm -hmm. Without environment, we can't go. You know, That's at right. the moment, as a nation, mm -hmm. as in, even in the global context, we are facing a lot of environmental issues. That's right. None of, yeah. us, uh, none of us can avoid. So we all have to go through. So we have to make measures. We are getting ready for the future mm -hmm. by giving the idea for the school children. So they are going back to their schools. And uh, hopefully we are planning that they will be acting, uh, uh, making measures, taking decisions mm -hmm. based on the concept. Mm -hmm. And um, Dr. Vasantinao, for you, uh, definitely, you know, for this campaign, you know, I Go Green 2018, you would definitely want to acknowledge uh, certain people in this. And also, what is the final message you would like to pass on to our viewers out there? Yeah, actually, I would like to remind our platinum spins, uh, sponsor, Maso Links, and also we have our main sponsor, Seamas Hospital. In addition to that, the University of Kalani has been giving us funding to conduct this program. Uh, the final message we want to take to the society is like Rangika explained, because we are living in this world and we only have this world, mm -hmm. right? We have to take care of it, we have to protect it. But we are not telling people to like, uh, okay, if I say somebody don't use your AC, the people are not going to be happy because yeah. it's uncomfortable. Yeah. But what we are trying to teach them is you can use your AC but make sure you don't waste it, you use it correctly, mm. and you save your environment for the future generation. Because it's important that we teach our children to take care of our world, right? That's so I think... Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so, uh, well, thank you so much once again, yeah. uh, Dr. Ranker, and also Dr. Vasanti for coming in. And also thank you for initiating this, because like I mentioned earlier, it's it's not just one set of students that you are teaching. It's like every year you are you are teaching a new set of students. So they are one 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 day will be released to society, and they will hopefully implement this in the country as well. That's really grateful, and we are happy as well uh, to and have one you on the show. Well. Um, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I would like to thank the Channel I for giving us this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Actually, this also helps us to give out, give out the message what we want to. Thank you You're very most much. Welcome. Yes. yes. Okay, right. So, so uh, mm -hmm. with that final message and with that final um, beautiful message out for all our viewers out there, it's time for us to say bye-bye on our Sunday's weekend's edition on Rise and Shine. Yeah. So till our team meets again tomorrow at the same time, same place. So bye-bye. Have a good Sunday. Yes. <laughs>